Many of us often hear these definitions. The leftist, rightist, centrist when listening news or reading an article about politics and society. But some people don't know exactly what they mean or they don't have a correct understanding. So, what do these concepts mean? What historical examples of left and right systems do we have? What is the current situation in the world? What contradictions and interesting facts exist regarding the concepts of left and right wings? And what that's got to do with movies and TV shows? Let's get started. The terms left and right are popularly thought to have been coined in 1789 during the French Revolution. In those times, the French Parliament had certain seating arrangement. The anti-royalists, also known as anti-monarchists, people who were against the king, sat on the left and the monarchists who supported the king grouped to the right in the National Assembly to display their differences over the king's veto powers. The term's recurrence in popular opinion goes back to the 1820s, according to Marcel Gaucher. Gaucher pointed out that both left and right need a center, and they are defined by reference to this center. Left and right represented the new and old France, the liberals and the ultra-royalists. If the left wing emerged from those looking to shake the monarchy, it logically ascribes to principles of equality, wealth redistribution and state welfare. Broadly speaking, the left focuses on equal access to rights and services across the social classes, the fair division of labor and workers' rights. It expects government intervention to guarantee the redistribution of capital, public social services, better living conditions and the reduction of inequalities, which is reflected in high taxation. It includes social democracy, socialism, communism and anarchism. The most essential feature of modern left movements is focusing on LGBT, feminism, migrants' rights and environmental issues. Sometimes they are called left liberals. This pits the left against the interests of the right, which often tends to be led by the traditional elites, including the wealthy and the aristocracy. The moderate left wing includes mainly social democracy. It's a mix of liberalism and socialism. The far left includes a range of socialist, populist and communist ideologies, which differ in practice and policy based on their approach towards liberal democracy. Socialists accept democracy, verbally at least, including incorporating the rights of the excluded and marginalized, for example, the unemployed and migrant workers in the political system. Communism is against market enterprise, liberal democracy, and is open to defend their ideas aggressively and violently. Right-wing politics holds the view that certain social orders, hierarchies and inequality are normal, inevitable and natural. They follow basic ethnic and religious traditions and respect them more than traditions of other nations and groups. It doesn't mean that they hate other ethnics and their culture and try to discriminate them by default, except extreme rights. It means that they find their own culture and views more valuable. The right wing often sticks to nationalism, takes on the defense of free markets with minimum state intervention and is not open to any kind of measures of social or economic equalization, especially those which come at a high cost to the public purse. So the rightists stand for low taxes. It addresses to classical liberalism. The rightists believe that the better conditions for business is the better conditions for whole society, since high competition in business leads to better service and high standard of living. Extreme right wing or fascism fundamentally and aggressively opposes democracy. In this perspective, extreme right is in essence anti-democratic, opposing the fundamental principle of sovereignty of the people. The term extreme right wing has been applied to movements including fascism, Nazism and racial supremacy. But there is also one thing about extreme right wing, which I'll talk about a bit later, not to confuse you now. Now let's talk about centrism. The center of gravity for politics is a middle ground which can appeal to both ends of the political spectrum. Centrism is a kind of neutral position. 
as a symbolic political label, the center takes on some values of equality and some of hierarchy to appeal to the middle ground. And often center ground aspirations hit political parties during elections in the hope and belief that electoral success lies in the middle. Centrists who are more sympathetic to the right wing are called center rightists and those who are more sympathetic to the left called center leftists. As I said before, this gradation was found in 18th century during the French Revolution. Let's go through specific and typical examples. The right wing. The oldest form of government is absolute monarchy. This system is a classic example of traditional and conservative model of society. Here we can see the social gradation into the many classes, from poor people to elites. Every monarchy in past times, regardless of its location, Europe, Asia or Africa, relate to this system. If we talk about republican form of government, we should mention the United States. Since their first days, they have chosen the course of classical liberalism and free market, which is a part of moderate right-wing system. Now let's look at the radical part of the right wing. As you already understood, it's the fascist Italy, Nazi Germany and Japan of that period, the 30s and 40s years of 20th century. Here we can see the ideas of racial supremacy, genocides, destroying of democracy, repressions and so on. In the beginning, I said that there is one thing to mention, it's that some experts classify this regime as left because of state control and upholding collective interests. But I am talking about classic version of gradation, in which fascism and Nazism is an extreme right ideology, not left. And yes, you can have your own assessment. The left wing. The influential communist manifesto by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, published in 1848, asserted that all human history is a history of class struggle. They predicted that a proletarian revolution would eventually overthrow capitalism and create a classless, stateless, communist society. It was in this period that the word wing was appended to both left and right. In the United States, many leftists, social liberals, progressives and trade unionists were influenced by the works of Thomas Paine, who introduced the concept of asset-based egalitarianism which theorizes that social equality is possible by redistribution of resources. Talking about civil rights, Sweden was one of the first countries which emancipated women. With a relatively high level of education, in 1862 unmarried Swedish women were the first worldwide to be granted conditional right to vote in municipal elections. Universal women's suffrage followed in 1921 since then, Sweden has remained a forerunner of gender equality, driven by both intellectual and practical feminist movement. Generally, Sweden has always been an example of non-radical leftist country, also called left liberal. But there is one controversial moment which we will consider a bit later. If we talk about radical forms of the left wing, we often think about the Soviet Union, especially its first decades after the working class headed by Lenin took a power. We all heard about repressions, collectivization, destroying of democracy and freedom of speech. But there is even more radical example, Cambodia under Pol Pot in 1976-1979. This regime was so extreme radical that Cambodians were encouraged to talk about themselves in the plural we rather than the singular I. Money was abolished and all citizens made to wear the same black clothing. Pol Pot's regime killed between 1.5 and 2 million people, approximately a quarter of Cambodia's population. Fortunately, his rule wasn't too long. Today the situation in political spectrum is very diverse. There is no radical form of any wings, except North Korea, which follows staff communism. Communist regimes in Cuba, Venezuela are more softer, but still weird. The Western world follows the center-left politics, except the United States, which is today, in 2020, heading to center-right under the presidency of Donald Trump. 
East European countries have always been center-rightists and don't want to change their path. They don't want to receive refugees and don't rush to legalize same-sex marriages. This fact annoys their Western neighbors in the European Union. Latin America seems to be centrists. Muslim world, of course, follows the right wing due to traditions. Concerning Far East countries, if we talk about so-called Asian tigers, Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong and Taiwan and other high developed countries, they are definitely right wing because of low taxes and following their national culture. If we talk about post-Soviet countries like Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan and others, they are kind of centrists but with so poor social security that only African countries have worse one. Now let's talk about some controversies and collisions. Many people who belong to even one wing often cannot understand each other. For example, as I said before, generally leftists stand for LGBT interests, but many radical representatives of this wing, communists, often disrespect homosexuals and transgenders. They tend to stress the economical agenda of left wing, financial aid and job security, ignoring other aspects. A striking example of such people is those citizens of the former Soviet Russia who now admire Lenin and Stalin. Another example of controversy I'd like to pay attention to is Sweden, which I mentioned earlier. In this country, officials can freely interfere in family affairs and take children from their families if there is a child abuse. But the problem is in definition, what exactly is a child abuse in different situations? Sometimes it's exaggerated and controversial. Anyway, if a country calls itself free and democratic, it shouldn't control the family institution so harshly and ignore parental rights, because it's not a part of liberal and democratic ideology, it's a sign of totalitarian system. Now let's move on modern trends in political spectrum nowadays, there are lots of interesting things too. In western world people are more sympathetic to left wing and are welcome to cultural, ethnic and sexual diversity. This fact influences entertainment industry so much that sometimes it becomes strange. For many people it's okay when some historical figures which were white in real life are shown in movies being Asian or Afro-American but other people think that it's unacceptable and unnatural. It's not about only historical movies or serials, it's about all types of them. Indeed, nowadays many films and games are made under control of so-called SJW, social justice warriors, activists, who always try to check if there are enough gays, transgenders, women, Asians or Africans in cast. SJW exists with the sole purpose of telling people in the entertainment industry what they are doing wrong. It's welcomed by some people and hated by others. I think that hurriedly fixing classic stories, movies and comic books that so many people love is definitely not the right thing to do. For instance, is everyone supposed to love a character, view her as a role model and see her as a source of inspiration just because she is a female? Of course it doesn't work so. Now let's see what can happen in future. Which political wing will become more popular? It's impossible to give an exact answer to this. At first glance, it seems that young people will still gravitate to the left wing due to trends and the influence of films. Add to this the fact that during the current recession and crisis, socialists and trade union movements are gaining popularity. But on the other hand, some experts believe that conservatives and nationalists who are tired of radical feminists as well as from refugees who cannot integrate into Western society will enjoy popularity. And don't forget about the trend of deglobalization, which will strengthen the right-wing mood in some countries. Well, that's all I want to say about the wings of the political spectrum. I'd also like to know which wing do you consider yourself to? Right, left, centrist, center-right or center-left? What are your political views? Share your thoughts in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, click the like button. Also, I'd be glad if you subscribe to my channel.
I'll make more videos about politics and society. So, see you next time.